Welcome to FluxDrive's instructional videos. This video will demonstrate how to install the air gap spacer shims in an FSC coupling. The FSC couplings will come with a stack of various sized air gap spacer shims. This FSC3 coupling comes with three different thickness shims, a set of 50,000 inch shims, a set of 100,000 inch shims, and two sets of 150,000 inch shims. With all shims installed, with FSC we'll see a total of 450 thousandths of an inch increase in total air gap. Prior to starting work on your coupling, ensure that the motor is properly tagged out. To install the shim, start by loosening all six of the spacer bolts. The bolt head has a knurled face used as an anti-rotation feature when the fasteners are tightened. It's important to hold the head from rotating while loosening the nut. Allowing the knurled face to rotate will gouge the face of the coupling reducing the bolt's locking ability. Install the four supplied jacking bolts into one side of the induction rotor. This will be the side that doesn't have a hub attached. Or when looking at it, it's the side that has the magnet rotor hub passing through its center. Be sure to run all four jacking screws in until they just come in contact with the magnet rotor face. The next step will be separating the induction rotor halves. Use a ratchet with an Allen socket or an Allen wrench and tighten each jacking bolt one quarter turn individually. Repeat this step until the gap between the induction rotor halves is wide enough to install the desired air gap spacer shim. Make sure that the shim spacers that are being installed are all of equal thickness. Remove two bolts at a time and drop the spacer in. Push the bolts back through the holes to retain the spacer from falling out. Install the nuts, but don't tighten at this time. Repeat this step for the remaining two spacers to be installed. Loosen each jacking bolt individually and back them out several turns, but don't remove them completely. These bolts will be used to center the air gap in the next couple of steps. Hand tighten the spacer bolts and using a torque wrench, tighten the fasteners to the specified torque outlined in the instruction manual. Some of these couplings come with either knurled nuts or knurled bolts. Hold the knurled fastener stationary while torquing the non knurled fastener. Here is an example of two different style of fasteners that may come with your FSC coupling. Install the second set of jacking bolts into the opposite induction rotor. Screw them in until they come in contact with the magnet rotor face. Hand tighten the four jacking bolts in the opposite induction rotor. Run them in until they just come in contact with the magnet rotor face. Back out each jacking bolt evenly. One complete turn equals about 50 thousandths of an inch change in air gap. In this example, a 100,000 inch shim was installed, so one turn on the jacking bolt should equal about half the thickness of the spacer shim. Loosen both set screws on the induction rotor hub. Loosen the six clamp bolts on the induction rotor hub. It is very important that this hub slides freely when the clamp bolts are loosened. A hub that is too tight will make setting the air gap very difficult. Using a ratchet and an Allen socket or an Allen wrench, tighten each jacking bolt on the induction rotor hub side in one quarter turn increments. Tightening these jacking bolts will force the hub to slide up the shaft. 
Placing a mark on the shaft is a good indicator that the hub has moved. A hub that is too tight on the shaft will make centering the air gap very difficult. Tighten each jacking bolt until the magnet rotor comes in contact with the jacking bolts on the opposite side. Some minor adjustment may be required to get an even air gap between the magnet rotor face and the induction rotor faces. Verify that the magnet rotor is centered in the induction rotor housing. Again, minor adjustments can be made to the jacking bolts to even the air gap. Using a torque wrench, tighten the six clamp bolts on the induction rotor hub in an alternating pattern. Tighten to the specified torque called out in the FSC instruction manual. Using an Allen wrench, Tighten both Allen set screws in the induction rotor hub. Remove the eight jacking bolts on both induction rotors. Verify that all eight bolts are accounted for. Any jacking bolts left in during operation will damage the coupling. Verify that the magnet rotor is centered inside the induction rotor housing. Some motors will have axial end play, which may cause the air gap to change when the jacking bolts are removed. Too much end play may cause the magnet rotor to come into contact with the induction rotor. It may be required to repair the motor to limit the end play, or you may have to readjust the air gap on the coupling to accommodate the excess of movement. As long as the magnet rotor does not come in contact with the induction rotor, the coupling should be safe to operate. This concludes our video. For more information on FluxDrive products, please visit our webpage at www.fluxdrive.com.